Hey guys, Joshua Honley here with J Wayne Productions. And today I have actually been asked, Josh, what is in your video bag when you go film a wedding or even go second shoot? Well, today I'm actually gonna answer that. Uh, first, let me kind of get started off in saying that this is not all of my equipment. This is only what I deem the most absolute important necessities. Uh, there are some extra things that are gonna be in here. Um, and I'd be more than happy to tell you what they are. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna go over what's in my actual main bag and my most important pieces of equipment. So let's get started. Uh, first thing that I would do is I would actually go out and buy one of these uh, lens multi-pack bags. Uh, yes, it looks like a fanny pack, but it will save you. Uh, especially whenever you're running out there and you need more than one lens, but you don't have anything to take it and you don't want to take all of your equipment just for the one lens. Uh, this will hold your lens, uh, some recorders, batteries, backups, everything, and it fits on your waist. And it is the most, I, I actually absolutely love this. Uh, so diving into our actual case, let's take a look and see what all we have in here. Uh, first thing first, uh, I am filming with my main camera. That is the Canon 60D, and I also have my Rokinon 14 millimeter manual 2.8 lens on there, as you can see right there. I'm not too far from it, obviously. Um, and I'm just filming on a very, very cheap tripod uh, for the purposes, and I'll, I'll actually show you my real tripod in a minute. Uh, so that is my main camera and my main lens. Jumping right in, let's go ahead and start with my backup cameras. I do have the Canon Rebel T3i and the T2i. Uh, the reason why I chose these is because they're normally the first pick for every DSLR filmmaker. That's normally what everybody starts with. That is not what I started with, uh, but it was two backup cameras that I purchased for around $200, $300 off of eBay used. Uh, a little beat up, but they do get the job done, and I use these quite a bit. Um, the next thing that I want to show y'all is actually my lenses. Uh, for the first lens that I have is the standard kit lens, 18-135 millimeter, 3.5 to 5.6. This, I never use this, but it, this is my backup lens. Uh, it's also a really good all-around lens. If I use this for anything, it'd be for my T3i or T2i in the back ceremony to film everything, either the bride and groom, and that gives me some leeway to zoom in, zoom out, how much I want to see, and it's actually wide enough and close enough that this is actually a really good all-around lens. It's a really good starter lens. This is the lens that I started with. Um, the only problem that I have with it is its aperture, um, that whenever it's fully extended, that it is 5.6 at its minimum, and whenever it's zoomed out all the way, it is 3.5, so it's not a very fast lens. My next lens is my favorite lens, the 24 to 70 millimeter L version 2, 2.8. Uh, this is the perfect all around lens for every kind of shot that you'd possibly need. It's fast enough for in low light situations. Um, it gives you that great zoom so you can zoom in quite a bit. It's great for interviews. It's great for details. Um, it's great for the ceremony. It's great for the reception. This is the perfect all around lens. So Canon did a really good job with this lens. I applaud you. Uh, my next lens is probably my most used lens. Uh, this is the 70 to 200 uh, version 2, 2.8 L. Um, any chance that I can use this lens, I will. There's not very many situations that I do use this lens, but any chance that I can, I will. Uh, the reason for that is because it, the the video just looks absolutely amazing. Um, this is actually what most photographers use for most of their uh, portraits, and there's a reason for that because it, it just, the quality is phenomenal. You can't beat it. Um, it's fast enough for low light situations, and when zoomed in all the way, the bokeh is just absolutely amazing. So any chance that I can use this lens, I will. My last lens is buried in here somewhere. Here we go. The Nifty 50. This is probably the first lens that most amateurs actually have, and I held on to this because I am cheap. Uh, this costs about $125 off Amazon. 
uh, and it's my fastest lens. It is 1.8. Um, it on a crop body, it's equivalent to an 85 millimeter. Um, it, it's this is the lens that I started out with that I absolutely love. This is how I learned videography uh, with um, how to maneuver with what I have to work with. Um, it's really great for interviews. Really good for details. Very good. Um, so this is a lens that I seldom use, but when I do, I always tell myself, why don't I use this more? So that's also in my bag. Uh, moving on, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is audio recorders. Uh, whenever recording a wedding, the most important thing that you can actually do for a wedding video is make sure that you have good audio. Um, so I'm actually going to show you the setup that I typically use, which is the setup right here. I'm actually recording on an H1 with a Sennheiser lavalier omnidirectional. It's not cardioid, so it's not going to it's not going to cancel out everything. Uh, it's actually going to pick up everything around it. So if one of my microphones fail, um, this microphone is close enough to the action that it'll capture everything. This is normally what we put on the mic. I'm sorry, on the groom, and we drop this into his pocket so it eliminates those frequency issues. Um, the only downside to that is that you have to make sure that the levels are okay before you drop it in there. Otherwise, you'll get clipping because there's no way of monitoring that. So that's our typical setup. We actually have two H1s uh, that we'll also drop into the minister's pocket or maybe even the best man's pocket. Whoever's really close to the action, um, if the minister already has a livelier mic, then we're just going to hook up another PA system and I'll get to that in a second. Our next recorder is the Zoom H4N. This thing is a beast. This is what we hook up into every PA system. Uh, so if there's multiple ministers and as long as there's a handheld microphone, as long as we hook up into the DJ booth or the mixer, uh, we'll capture all the audio. We'll also capture all the music for the ceremony. Uh, and this is normally what we use. If we do choose to go a different route while filming or recording the groom's audio, what we will do is we will use our Sennheiser EW... 1112 series. These are the wireless packs. Uh, so if we want to hook the audio straight into the camera so that we're dual recording into the recorder and in the camera without having to sync it later in post, this is the way that we'll go. Uh, I do like to do that option more as much as I can, but sometimes there's too much frequency that we just cannot do that. Uh, apart from that, these are a couple of things that you'll want to have whenever doing it that way. You're going to want to have some headphone splitters and 3.5 to 3.5 cable. And what this is going to do is you're going to hook this up into the H4N, and that way you can monitor the actual audio by listening to it and continue out and straight into your camera. That's the best setup to do it. That way you're recording straight into the H4N and also dual recording into your camera without having to sync it later in post. But you do have the option as a backup in case your camera fails, you're still recording the audio. Continuing on with audio, we have our shotgun microphone, the Rode NTG2, and the Dead Cat fuzzy cover. Um, these are really good for doing interviews, uh, also having this on a camera for whenever somebody's talking, uh, perhaps whenever the bride is getting ready or the groom is getting ready and they're saying something funny and you're just on the run and gun, this is the setup that you're going to want to have. You're going to want to put it straight onto your camera and connect it straight into your camera. <coughs> using an XLR to 3.5, and that is also this one right here. Uh, that way it'll connect straight to your camera, and you won't have any problems with that. Um, continuing on with what we have, I do have a couple of extras in here. I have the Expo Disc White Balancer. Uh, this thing is amazing. I absolutely love it. It's really cool because it has a clip that you can actually clip this onto your belt. White balancing is a huge issue, especially for weddings, um, for any video purposes. Uh, let's just say the video or the venue, it just has very bad colors. Like you have a little bit of blue and a little purple and a little bit of green. It's just really odd um, and you're having trouble finding a correct white balance. This is normally what I try and do to correct it. It'll capture all the light coming in, create a white balance card inside of the camera and custom white balance to it. It's not always perfect, but it's a good base for what I need and the rest that I can fix in post. So this is something that you definitely want to look into getting. I have a mini tripod here. 
what I'll do is I'll normally hook this up into one of my uh, backup cameras and I'll have this in the aisle kind of pointed up with a wide angle lens uh, that I can capture everybody walking down and it'll capture their full body and it's right before the beginning of the actual altar <clears throat> so it's really good to have as that backup angle also have some extra lavalier microphones um, this is the exact same one that I'm recording on right now um, it's always good to have backups and extras so one for the groom one for the minister uh, maybe one for the podium if the DJ's mixer board is completely full um, it's always good to have backups you cannot have enough lavaliers the other thing that you cannot have enough of is cables XLR to 3.5s, XLR to XLR, 3.5 to 3.5, XLR to 3.5, 3.5 to mini. You cannot have enough cables because you never know what kind of situation that you're going to need a different cable for. So I advise having two of everything. I have more XLR to 3.5s because most of the time I use XLR. It's a more stable connection, but most of my cameras take 3.5 unless you have a mixer on the bottom. Uh, so get many, many, many of these cables. Um, following that up, I also have a longer XLR to 3.5. Uh, for some reason, distance is an issue. Uh, I also have a 3.5 to AV, AV to 3.5, um, because you never know what kind of connection you're going to need to get into the DJ board. Uh, that's something that you just need to ask a DJ. You know, hey, Mr. DJ, what what cables do I need to be able to hook up into your board and record the audio? Uh, every DJ will tell you something different because every DJ's board is different. They have multiple, multiple outs. You just need one free one. Um, talk to them before the wedding so that you're prepared. And if not, have, have minis, mini cables. That's the best thing that I can say. Um, next thing that I have is my memory card case. Now, this holds all my memory cards, has backups in case one of them fails. Uh, you're going to want to have a, some kind of organizing system. Maybe flip one backwards, saying this one's full, flipped up means it's empty. Um, coordinate that, and you also want to make sure that it's a strong case so that your memory cards don't get damaged or wet. I have a couple of various lights right here. Um, this is a Tunskin light. Take this off. Now it's a LED light. It's really good to have, especially for the reception. Uh, most receptions are very dark. I try not to use these if I don't have to. I'll just kick up the ISO. It's probably about 3,200. Um, and you're probably thinking, oh, but you're not supposed to go above 800. Yes and no. You're not supposed to go above 800 because that's whenever you start introducing noise to any camera, uh, especially on the 60D. If you have the 6D or the 5D Mark III, you can probably go up to 2500 and still be perfectly fine. Um, but as long as you have the program Neat Video, it costs about $100. Noise really isn't much of an issue. Uh, it's a really great program, so we'll kick up the ISO as high as we have to uh, before we start introducing these. Maybe even introduce these as a kicker light or a fill light. Um, I have two lights in here. <coughs> Excuse me mainly because you might want to have one on this camera, one on the other camera, or have them on a stand pointed down so you can get both sides of the room, have one as a fill light, have one as a hair light. Um, so just play around with those. And you're also going to want to have batteries, uh, not AA batteries, but actual batteries like camera batteries. Uh, the reason why is because they last a lot longer in these. Uh, I could probably get about four hours of uh, light versus an hour of light with the AA batteries and in the end these are going to be a lot cheaper especially to just recharge let's see what am I missing I do have a lens dust remover and a cloth because you never know what's going to get on your lens maybe somebody might spill a drink uh, I know I'd freak out if some that happened but you never know what's going to happen Always good to be, pre be prepared. The other thing that I have is an extra base plate for my tripod because nothing is more annoying 
than getting to a venue and not having a base plate for a tripod. Uh, weddings are a tripod must. If you ever see a second shooter going freehand, unless he has a very, very, very steady hand, you need to talk to him. Tripods, always. If you're having an outdoor wedding, this is also a must. A uh, little sun hood screen protector. What this does is it just slips right on to your swivel screen and allows you to see without having the sun blaring down. Because if you're trying to expose properly with the sun blaring down on your LCD, you're going to overexpose because it might look right, but it's really not. It's, re it's actually very overexposed. Or you might be very underexposed. Um, so do this. The, the, the better way to check is, say it's 2 o'clock and you have the brightest sun possible, record a little bit, and then go inside. Go to a very shaded area, and then watch it on your LCD. You're gonna say, wow, that looks very overexposed, but it looked right outside. That's what this is gonna help you for. Again, these are cheap. I bought these for like $2 off Amazon because I'm cheap like that. Up here we have backup batteries. We have them for the camera. Uh, we have them for the 60D, we have them for the T2i, T3i. They're all charged and we make sure that we charge them. Even if we're pretty sure that they're charged, we always double check because if you don't have a battery, then you don't have video and then you don't have gigs, then you don't get paid and you get sued. So don't cheap out on batteries. Make sure that you have plenty of batteries. Uh, I have grips on all of my cameras because it allows me to have two batteries. Um, doubles the life of the camera. Most of the time I don't ever have to change them out, but you always want to have backup batteries just in case. Same thing in here, I have chargers. I also have some grips. I have another lens cloth um, in case I lose the first one. The grip is used just to clamp down on something and to attach something to the end of it. Um, so that's always really good to have. The last thing that I have right here is a flathead screwdriver to screw in all base plates to the tripods. I have a cardioid handheld microphone. It's great for interviews. So if I'm holding it right here, you're gonna hear me perfectly fine, but if I, if I move it to the side, you can, you're not gonna hear anything. Uh, it's really good to have, especially for the reception, because the speakers are normally very loud and you can't hear anything, especially if you don't have a designated interview section. This is the best thing to have because it'll cancel out all that noise, but only pick up the person speaking. And of course I have a backup shotgun microphone. I don't ever use it, but again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Being in wedding videography, I am extremely OCD about making sure that I have everything that I need and having backups is an absolute must. So that's it for the actual case. Now there's three other things that I wanna show y'all before we get out of here. And that's my most important equipment. Obviously, the most important piece of equipment is gonna be a tripod. If you show up to a wedding without a tripod, go home. Uh, some people sit, come to with the rigs. I don't like that because it looks very documentary. It looks like something from a reality show. I'm a cinematographer, so I do not like rigs. Um, now, I haven't really messed around with rigs too much. I'm trying to come up with one myself, but for weddings, tripods all the way. Now, the next piece of equipment will also be attached to a tripod, and that is a slider. Now, what the slider does is it creates those cinematic shots that you see. Uh, they sometimes very subtle, sometimes very dramatic. Uh, I like to use this whenever I'm behind a wall and introduce the rooms. I like to kind of um, slide and pan to a brighter groom. Um, I like to slide from objects to open objects. I like to slide out and in. Um, about 80% of my shots are on sliders and they're used with slides. So this is my normal setup. I have this on my tripod right here and I never take it off unless I'm using this piece of equipment right here, which is the Glidecam HD 2000. Uh, this is a stabilizer, and what this allows me to do is walk through the crowd and not have that jittery movement, or 
shaky movement from stepping. If you take a camera and you'll go step, 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 you're going to see it. With this, you take the step, it'll look like it's floating on air. I use these for the grand exits. I use this for the uh, reception. Whenever people are dancing, I like to uh, walk around people, create a spin. Um, it, it's really nice, especially whenever somebody's spinning around and you're spinning the same way with them. It, it's really bizarre looking, but the clients love it. They absolutely love it. And uh, this is probably one of the most, second most important piece of equipment that I could advise to you. Um, especially for the grand exit. If you're following behind them or following in front of them, it, it's better than just having a tripod in the stand or zooming. It's a lot better. Uh, so those are the most important pieces of equipment that I could advise y'all having. Apart from that, just show up, know what you're filming, uh, make sure that all your equipment is ready to go, make sure you have backups of everything, dress appropriately, bring business cards, and just have fun. Uh, most weddings, everybody makes them out to be really hard, but they're really not. They're actually very easy. Just make sure that you get your most important shots, and then it's all about creativity from there. What shot's going to look good here? What shot's going to look good there? Will this shot look good? And it's just video, guys. I mean, if you don't like a shot, just delete it um, and do it over. Um, and just, just let everything play. Look for details. Look for movement. Look for emotion. Um Write down a shot list of everything that you think would look good. Imagine what the video is going to look like before you even go in there and shoot to that. That's normally the way that we do it, and it has paid off so far. Uh, and again, I've just showed you my basic equipment. This is normally what I bring to every single wedding, um, every single shoot that I ever do. This is normally my go-to case right here and my go-to equipment. Uh, so with this equipment, you should be more than um, equipped to film a wedding properly. So I'm Joshua Hunley, guys. Visit us at www.jwayneproductions.com. We're trying to create some more blog posts. This one is our third post. Like us on Facebook at Facebook slash jwayneproductions. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, please comment below. I am me. Uh, message us on Facebook. We'd be more than happy to help. Again, my name is Joshua Hunley. Thanks for watching.